Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bul Fatih. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace Sultan Ibrahim ibn al Marhum Sultan Iskandar Al Hajj of Johor upon his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the Sultan and reviewed with him the deep rooted brotherly relations and means of further bolstering them in all areas. His Majesty expressed pride in the level of the Bahraini Malaysian relations, hailing their development for the benefit of both countries and their people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today chaired a meeting of the Government Executive Committee held remotely. He affirmed that Bahrain's response to COVID-19, including actions by all members of Team Bahrain, is primarily shouldered by first responders who have made great sacrifices to keep the community safe and society can best express its gratitude to them by strictly following all precautionary measures. He recognized the value of maintaining a robust public health response that includes all members of society as the virus continues to transcend race, ethnicity and religious affiliation. His Royal Highness emphasized that citizens and residents must all commit for Bahrain with determination over the next two weeks until the 1st of October so that the community can together mitigate the spread of the virus. On this note, the Crown Prince expressed his sincere appreciation for the dedicated efforts of first responders and thanked citizens and residents who remain committed to following precautionary health measures. Following consideration of a report submitted by the National Medical Task Force to combat the coronavirus headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, His Excellency Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, it was decided to postpone the return of administrative, technical and teaching staff at public schools for a two-week period until the 4th of October 2020, whilst ensuring that teachers and educational staff are periodically tested for COVID-19 in coordination with the Ministry of Health. The Government's Executive Committee also decided to extend the postponement of the return to in-person learning at public schools until the 11th of October 2020. This decision does not extend to private schools and their kindergartens in accordance with measures already in place. A decision was also taken to postpone the reopening opening of indoor dining services at restaurants and cafes for a period of one month until the 24th of October 2020. The National Medical Task Force associated the success of Bahrain's frontline response to the level of coordination involved and the active participation of civil society, which has a direct impact on lowering the spread of the virus and encouraged a return to the higher level of restraints observed in March. The executive committee, based on the recommendations of the National Medical 
Local Task Force called on citizens and residents to limit gatherings to members of the same household and a closed social circle for a duration of two weeks until one, until the 1st of October 2020 and comply with all precautionary health measures, which requires a firm commitment to wearing masks in public settings and limiting outings to necessities while strictly observing social distancing measures. Relevant uh, decisions in this regard will be reviewed periodically in a manner that preserves the health and safety of everyone. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa volunteered to take the Corona vaccine as part of the third phase trials. He expressed thanks and appreciation to all the caterers and frontliners for their efforts in ensuring the safety of citizens and residents. His Royal Highness affirmed that His Majesty prioritizes the health of citizens and residents and that alone enhanced all efforts that combat the virus and contributed to the success of the kingdom in this regard. His Royal Highness praised the contribution and cooperation of citizens and residents in regards to the third phase of the vaccine trials, which affirms the role of Team Bahrain in overcoming all challenges. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to protect Bahrain and wished everyone lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met remotely with the Chairman of the China National Pharmaceutical Group Corporation, Sinopharm Liu Junzhen, and the Chief Executive of G42, Dr. Pen Shao, an artificial intelligence company based in Abu Dhabi. His Royal Highness noted that unity of purpose and international cooperation are needed to successfully overcome the current global challenges presented by coronavirus. He further noted the kingdom's continued commitment and determination to support the global efforts in combating COVID-19 by contributing to the Phase 3 clinical trials aimed at safeguarding the health of people everywhere. He extended thanks for the efforts of those conducting the clinical trials in the People's Republic of China and the United Arab Emirates, adding that the Phase 3 clinical trials would not have been possible without the commitment of Chinese citizens volunteering for its second phase. His Royal Highness emphasized that that Lateral cooperation between Bahrain and the UAE during the Phase 3 clinical trials reinforces the strength of relations between the two countries, which continues to advance across all levels. He expressed his best wishes for the success of the Phase 3 clinical trials, adding that the approval and global adoption of the vaccine would represent a humanitarian milestone and a major step in overcoming one of the greatest challenges faced by humanity. His Royal Highness highlighted that volunteering alongside the Kingdom's loyal citizens and residents within the Phase 3 COVID-19 clinical trials was one of many individual contributions to ensure a safe solution is developed to eradicate the virus and protect others. In this regard, the Crown Prince expressed his pride in the Kingdom's citizens and residents who have willingly made great sacrifices during these unprecedented times. For their part, Jing Zhen and Dr. Xiao expressed their greatest gratitude and appreciation for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's support to further strengthen efforts aimed at combating and eradicating COVID-19 and safeguarding all. A phone call was held today between the Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister Zaid bin Rashid Zayani and the Israeli Minister of Tourism Asaf Zamer. They reviewed a number of topics pertaining to the tourism sector and ways to enhance cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Israel within the framework of the peace declaration signed between them recently. The two ministers asserted that such cordial meetings have a great impact on enriching the tourism sector in light of the region's stability and the historic change it is witnessing, which contributes significantly to revitalizing the sector, adding that they are looking forward to bolstering cooperation and paving the way for investment in such a vital sector. As Zayani highlighted the latest developments of the tourism sector in the kingdom and the efforts being exerted by the industry ministry and the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority BTEA to develop the sector, improve tourism services and consolidate the kingdom's deep-rooted image as a country that welcomes and attracts visitors from the region and all over the world. He also indicated that the way is paved for enhancing the tourism movement between the two countries and facilitating the official travel procedures between them.
Bahrain's Foreign Minister Dominique Raab praised the historic signing of the peace agreements between the UAE, Bahrain and Israel, as well as the U.S. leadership after a meeting with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Washington. He stated Britain's full support for the agreements at a joint media conference with Pompeo and added that these are important steps towards a peaceful and prosperous Middle East. He also said that Britain believes to be an opportunity for dialogue between Israelis and the Palestinians, which will be ultimately necessary for an enduring two-state solution. Pompeo said that watching three nations together establishing relations was a great day and that these historic events show what is possible when people of good will work towards achieving peace. The Netherlands also congratulated Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates and Israel on the peace accord signed at the White House. The Dutch Minister of Foreign Affairs, Stef Bloch, posted a statement on his Twitter account in which he said that his country looks forward to better relations with, between Israel and the Arab countries and on peace for Israelis and Palestinians through the two-state solution. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, met with his American counterpart, Mike Pompeo, and leading U.S. congresspersons at the conclusion of the UAE minister's visit to Washington, where a peace agreement with Israel was signed. Various methods for cooperation between the UAE and Israel were discussed during the meeting, with the aim of bringing positive change to the Middle East and to enhancing peace and stability in it. The ministry, the minister, affirmed his country commitment to joint cooperation to safeguard peace and security in the Arabian Gulf and to combat extremism and various threats to the region's stability. The minister also affirmed the UAE's long-standing support for the Palestinian people. The chairman of the Transitional Military Council, the TMC, in the Bradley Republic of the Sudan, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan, met at his office in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid Al Mana, and the accompanying delegation on the occasion of their visit to deliver the contributions of the kingdom to the people of Sudan and to visit the areas most affected by the floods. Al Burhan hailed the efforts of His Majesty. King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in supporting the people of Sudan, particularly in light of the exceptional circumstances the country is going through in light of the recent floods. As Sayyid conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his condolences to the victims of the floods, as well as his wishes of further progress and prosperity to the people of Sudan. For his part, Lieutenant General Al Burhan valued the noble stances of the kingdom led by His Majesty the King in support of Sudan and the kingdom's consolidation with the Sudanese people. He understood the deep-rooted fraternal relations and their continuous development, as well as the joint interest in further bolstering cooperation at all levels. The virtual Bahrain 2020 conference has concluded its sessions, which have taken place over the course of two days, during which 39 experts from Bahrain, the region and the world gave talks, and in which around 500 participants from around the world were present. The participants called for the emulation of the Bahraini experience with building a digital database, an advanced telecommunications infrastructure and an electronic government gateway through which various services are conducted. They said that these factors have enabled the Kingdom of Bahrain to overcome the negative impact of the pandemic and it's helped to carry on businesses, education and other aspects of life. The participants expressed their admiration for Bahrain's progress in its process of digital transformation through which an increasing number of economic activities can be conducted online. They praised the role of Bahrain's digital field in enhancing the government's services and its economy. They also praised the success of the conference which they said has widened the horizon of progress in vital sectors of Bahraini life, including education, health, commerce and digital security. The Kingdom of Bahrain is joining the world in marking the World Patient Safety Day, which is observed today, September the 17th, under the theme Health Worker Safety, a priority for patient safety. The slogan was chosen by the World Health Organization, the WHO, to affirm that the safety of the workers in the health sector reflects on the safety of the patients. The international celebration shows the importance of the safety of workers in the health sector and patients, notably amidst the current circumstances undergone 
by the world because of the outbreak of coronavirus COVID-19. The Ministry of Health in the Kingdom of Bahrain accords a great importance to providing optimum health care for the Bahraini community by providing all needed preventive measures to reduce infections, conducting checkups through nasal swabs and following a strong detection system to find out people who come into contact with existing cases. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,824 with 613 recoveries, 841 registered new cases and one death. 124 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 716 are contacts of active cases and one is travel related. The deceased was a 42-year-old male expatriate. The Ministry expressed its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible. And the Interior Ministry has registered a new international accomplishment when the program of rehabilitating and integrating convicts into society, Tamam, and the public interest program concerning the implementation of the alternative penalty law have won the 2020 STEVI Award for Excellent Administration Team. The award attracted 4,000 candidates from 74 countries and the winners were selected by 12 panels comprising of 270 international experts. The the two programs were widely praised for their positive social results in addition to their innovative nature by developing humane solutions with a modern and comprehensive scientific approach. The two programs achieved the highest rates of return on investment and reduced reduce prices.